One thing about these particular laboratory notebooks, we never ever want to fold them over an ink pen. And this is something that uh, somebody might do without even thinking about it. Uh, it's not an unusual thing to do. Uh, but we want to get stay out of the habit of ever doing that with our laboratory notebook. And the reason for that, number one, is that it crimps the binder and will reduce the life expectancy of the particular book. But even more importantly, what if the pen breaks? What if it leaks? Uh, it's going to wipe out several pages uh, of your notes. It could even wipe out some of your data. So we never want to store a pen uh, squeezed in the lines of a book. Okay, well, let's talk more then about the uh, technician's uh, uh, notebook, uh, what it is and what it is not used for. Uh, first of all, of course, all entries must be legible. That they're, you know, sloppy handwriting is simply not allowed. If you can't uh, write in cursive um, uh, in a legible manner, then you have to print in block letters, period, no discussion. Okay, if they're not legible, it's the same as not writing it down. It didn't happen. Unless otherwise directed, there are only three types of entries. We call these the three Ds, and that stands for dates, data, and deviations. Dates. The current date is for today's experiment. So if you're before you entered anything else into it, you would write the, today's date. Okay. Archival dates are for continuation of experiments. Let's say the experiment took two or three days to complete, but we had maybe today we made buffers for the experiment, and tomorrow we actually ran the experiment, and the third day we had uh, uh, we got the data back. Okay, as far as what? Well, we would have all three dates, and they would be rest or they would be referenced in a nested fashion. So we might have today's date, and then beneath that the SOP, and then tomorrow we would put tomorrow's date first, and then beneath that we would say this is a continuation of the SOP began the previous day. Continuity dates. Uh, there's, sometimes there's a period um, where you don't have, aren't producing any data, you're not running any experiments, and let's say it's a, a week or more. Uh, during that period of time, we want continuity. We don't want to see large gaps that are left in the notebook. Maybe somebody 100 years from, from now is looking at your laboratory's research, and it would be cause confusion. Uh, why weren't they doing anything? Or maybe you get into a patent dispute, and one of the lawyers uh, sees these uh, gaps. Every, every three or four weeks, there's a gap of a week, and uh, they were right to question whether or not um, uh, you were practicing the particular invention or, or, or adequately spending time developing it. Data. Data are observations on whatever you're working on and the times, uh, particularly start times and end times. All of that information is potentially valuable. Discoveries are never made by self-involved, unengaged, and unobservant scientists. It's the deviation from dogma that wins Nobel Prizes, and your observations are critical in spotting new phenomena that may not uh, be routine. When making a reagent, note the colors, whether it's translucent or opaque, clear or cloudy. Note the formation of any precipitants. Note the formation of layers. For instance, if you have a separation into a top layer and a bottom layer, uh, that could be important in the long run. It indicates there's a lack of solubility. Note the approximate times when a change was observed. Uh, not expecting you to keep a running you know, uh, dialogue of the clock, but let's say uh, 15 minutes into step two on SOP 2075, uh, you notice that a precipitant formed and then disappeared. It might be potentially a valuable observation at some point in the future. It indicates something was going on with the reagents uh, in that particular vial. Um, Always pay attention to start and stop times. If an SOP says 15 minutes, then note the time started so that you know when it's time to stop. Now, if you're using a timer, note that as well. Note any temperature changes that might indicate endothermic or exothermic reactions. Let's say you mix two reagents in a vial and you notice that it began to sweat on the outside from condensation. It cooled down, in other words. Or maybe you notice that the vial was warm. That's a potentially important observation. Deviations. I have a rule in my laboratory. No harm will befall anyone that screws up and writes it down. Okay, so if you drop something, if you made a mess, if you spilled it, uh, if you mixed the wrong reagents together, if you recorded it as a deviation, there's not going to be any bad thing that happens to you. Uh, if it turns out later on that uh, uh, you were aware of a, of a particular problem with an experiment and you didn't note it for whatever reason, uh, that's going to be a reprimand. Now, if you're told it's okay to substitute um, one chemical for another, let's say PBS or phosphate buffered saline for SSC or um, saline sodium citrate, let's say you were told by your um, uh, preceptor or by your uh, boss that you could um, change a step, 
I would still note it in my notebook, even though they said it was okay, because that's an important deviation and it might be relevant later on. Now, you should never make the same kind of substitution without authorization, and particularly without writing it down, okay? You could lose your job for unauthorized deviations from an SOP. Temperature is also very important. Uh, one of the things that might happen, let's say that your, your SOP calls for a particular set of reagents to be at, uh, on ice and uh, you started the reaction and then didn't realize you didn't have your ice bath out. And so uh, by the time you got, an, got it into ice, uh, five minutes had passed. And, and so the material then was at ambient for a longer period of time. Well, because it was uh, ice temperature is um, uh, pretty close to zero and ambient temperature is pretty close to 25 degrees Celsius, uh, that could be a big difference in the rate of the reaction. Note it. Make sure that you make a, a comment about that in your laboratory notebook because that's an important deviation. Uh, what if the temperature climbed unexpectedly? Uh, let's say you uh, had an incubation that was 37 degrees centigrade for an hour and you read the thermometer and it said 37 degrees and you put this uh, material in, you come back an hour and now the thermometer reads uh, 40 degrees centigrade. Uh, variety of reasons that might happen. Um, you would certainly want to note that because now you've got a uh, condition which was deviant from the SOP it was called for. Corrections, okay? Uh, you've written something down and you made an error and so now you have to correct it. Uh, preferably one, I usually, usually use two, one or two strike throughs uh, through a particular uh, line or uh, every line in a particular paragraph is the proper way of doing that. You don't want to blacken it out, okay? Uh, you want whoever is reading your notebook later on to be able to see that and uh, know what was there. Um, redacting a particular paragraph by completely blacking it out. Uh, that might be read in sometime in the future as you got a result that went against what you wanted and, as, and you hit it. Um, and it can be something that might be raised as a point of law in a patent dispute, for instance. So we never redact, we never black out a whole sentence or paragraph or even a word. Don't worry about the embarrassment, okay? We, it happens to everybody. And so uh, if you're going to make a correction, one, two strike throughs uh, is, is sufficient. And then of course, put your initials next to it, indicating that you struck through it. Um, extraneous matter, like writing some class notes, uh, for instance, in a laboratory notebook is not to be done either. Uh, what happens is your notes become data. They become part of the uh, history of the laboratory. That's just not right. You don't want to do that. Um, extraneous emarginata, okay, uh, things like phone numbers. You don't ever want to do that. And sometimes, you know, you're working in a laboratory, you take a call, uh, there's no scratch paper around, your notebook's right there, and you're tempted to write out a phone number, and maybe it's uh, part of uh, your work. Maybe it is a, it's a vendor or somebody else that you need to talk to or a colleague. Don't do it. Resist the temptation. And don't think you're going to do it, uh, scratch it in there, and then go back and put two lines through it either. Just don't do it. Editorial remarks are things like happy faces, uh, exclamation points, uh, goofy remarks, uh, you know, yay, the experiment worked. It doesn't belong there. When you do that, it becomes part of the data. Um, it's extremely unprofessional to include editorial remarks of any kind. They detract from the work. They may actually render the notes inadmissible as proof of reduction to practice. It happens. <laughs>